Hello friends, I am Asa Jacob. Welcome back to my channel. Today I gonna read chapter 6 Practical Techniques in Mental Healings from the book A Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. So let's start it. An engineer has a technique and a process for building a bridge or an engine. Like the engineer, your mind also has a technique for governing, controlling and directing your life. You must realize that methods and techniques are primary. In building the Golden Gate Bridge, the chief engineer understood mathematical principles, stresses and strains. Secondly, he had a picture of the ideal bridge across the bay. The third step was its application of tried and proven methods by which the principles were implemented until the bridge took form and would drive on it. There are also the techniques and methods by which your prayers are answered. If your prayer is answered, there is a way in which it is answered, and this is a scientific way. Nothing happens by chance. This is a world of law and order. In this chapter, you will find practical techniques for the unfolding and nurture of your spiritual life. Your prayers must not remain up in the air like balloon. They must go somewhere and accomplish something in your life. When we come to analyze prayer, we discover there are many different approaches and methods. We will not consider in this book the formal ritual prayers used in religious services. These have important place in group worship. We are Im immediately concerned with the methods of personal prayer as it is applied in our daily life and as it is used to help others. Prayer is the formulation of an idea concerning something we wish to accomplish. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Your desire is your prayer. It comes out you the past needs and reveals the things you want in life. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after right news, for they shall be filled. That is really prayer. Life's hunger and thirst for pitch, harmony, health, joy and all the other blessings of life. The passing over technique for impregnating the subconscious. This consists essentially in inducing the subconscious mind to take over your request as handed it by the conscious mind. This passing over is best accomplished in the reverie like state. Know that in your deeper mind are infinite intelligence and infinite power. Just calmly think over what you want, see it coming into fuller fruition from this moment forward. Be like the little girl who had a very bad cough and a sore throat. She declared firmly and repeatedly, It is passing away now, it is passing away now. It passed away in about a year hour. Use this technique with complete simplicity and naivety. Your subconscious will accept your blueprint. If you were building a new home for yourself and family, you know that you would be intensely interested in regard to the blueprint for your home. You would see to it that the builders conformed to the blueprint you would watch the material and select only the best wood, steel, 
in fact the best of everything what about your mental home and your mental blueprint for happiness and abundance all your experience and everything that enters in your life depend upon the nature of the mental building blocks which you use in the construction of your mental home if your blueprint is full of mental patterns of fear, worry, anxiety, or lack, and if you are despondent, doubtful, and cynical, then the texture of the mental material you are weaving into your mind will come forth as you toil, care, tension, anxiety, and limitation of all kinds. The most fundamental and the most far-reaching activity in life is that which you build into your mentality. Every waking hour, your world is silent and invisible. Nevertheless, it is real. You are building your mental home all the time, and your thought and mental imagery represent your blueprint. Hour by hour, moment by moment, you can build radiant health, success and happiness by the thoughts you think, the ideas which you harbor, the beliefs that you accept, and the sense that you rehearse in the hidden studio of your mind. This is strictly mentioned upon the construction of which you are perpetually against is your personality your identity in this plane your whole life story on this earth get a new blueprint built silently by realizing pitch harmony joy and goodwill in the present moment by dwelling upon this thing and claiming them your subconscious will accept your blueprint and bring all these things to pass. By their fruits, you shall know them. The science and the art of true prayer. The term science means knowledge, which is coordinated, arranged, and systematized. Let us think of the science and art of true prayer as it deals with the fundamental principles of life and the techniques and the processes by which they can be demonstrated in your life as well as in the life of every human being when he applies them faithfully. The art is a technique or process and the science behind it is the definite response of creative mind to your mental picture or thought. Ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you matthew 7 to 7 here you are told you shall receive that for which you ask it shall be opened to you when you knock and you shall find that for which you are searching this rotation implies in the definiteness of mental and spiritual laws. There is always a direct response from the infinite intelligence of your subconscious mind to your conscious thinking. If you ask for bread, you will not receive a stone. You must ask believing if you will not receive. Your mind moves from the thought to the thing unless there is first an image in the mind. It cannot move. For them, it would not be nothing for it to move forward. Your prayer, which is your mental act, must be accepted as an image in your mind before the power from your subconscious will play upon it and make it productive. You must reach a point of acceptance in your mind, an unqualified and undisputed state of agreement. This contemplation should be accompanied by a feeling 
of joy and restfulness in foreseeing the certain accomplishment of your desire. The sound basis for the art and science of true prayer is a knowledge and complete confidence that the movement of your conscious mind will gain a definite response from your subconscious mind, which is one with boundless wisdom and infinite power. By following this procedure, your prayers will be answered. The visualization technique, the easiest and most obvious way to formulate an idea is to visualize it, to see it in your mind's eye as vividly as if it were alive. You can see with the naked eye only what already exists in the external world in a similar way that which you can visualize in mind's eye already exists in the invisible realms of your mind and a picture which you have in your mind is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen what you form in your imagination is as real as any part of your body the idea and the thought are real and will one day appear in your objective world if you are faithful to your mental image this process of thinking forms impressions in your mind these impressions in turn become manifested as facts and experiences in your life the builder visualizes the type of building he wants he sees it as he desires it to be completed his imagery and thought process become a plastic mold from which the building will emerge a beautiful or an ugly one a skyscraper or a very low one his mental imagery is projected as a drawn on paper. Eventually the contractor and his workers gather the essential materials and the building progresses until it stands finished, conforming perfectly on the mental patterns of the architect. I use the visualization technique prior to speaking from the platform I quiet the wills of my mind in order that I may present to the subconscious mind my images of thought. Then I picture the entire auditorium and the seats filled with men and women, and each one of them illuminated and inspired by the infinite healing presence within each one. I see them as radiant, happy, and free. Having first built up the idea in my imagination, I quietly sustain it there as a mental picture. While I imagine, I hear men and women saying, I am healed, I feel wonderful, I have had an instantaneous healing, I am transformed. I keep this up for about 10 minutes or more, knowing and feeling that each person's mind or body are saturated with love, wholeness, beauty and perfection. My awareness grows to the point where in my mind I can actually hear the voices of the multitude proclaiming their health and happiness. Then I release the whole picture and go onto the platform. Almost every Sunday some people stop and say that their prayers were answered. Mental movie method. The Chinese say a picture is all a thousand words. William James, the father of American psychology, stressed the fact and the subconscious mind will bring to pass. And a picture held in the mind and backed by faith. Act as though I am and I will be. A number of years ago, I was in the Middle West lecturing in several states and I desired to be at 
to have a permanent location in the general area from which I could serve the who desired help. I traveled for but the desire did not leave my idea. One evening while in a hotel in Spokane, Washington, I relaxed completely on a coach, immobilized my attention and in a quiet passive manner imagined that I was talking to a large audience saying in effect I am glad to be here. I have prayed for the ideal opportunity I saw in my mind's eye the imaginary audience and I felt the reality of it all. I played the role of the actor, dramatized this mental movie and felt satisfied that this picture was being conveyed to my subconscious mind which would bring it to pass in its own way. The next morning on awakening I felt a great sense of peace and satisfaction and in a few days time I received a telegram asking me to take over an organization in the Midwest which I did and I enjoyed it immensely for several years. The method outlined here appeals to many who have described it as the mental movie method. I have received numerous letters from people who listen to my radio talks and weekly public lectures telling me of the wonderful results they get using this technique and the sale of their property. I suggest to those who have homes or property for sale and satisfy themselves in their own mind that their price is right. Then I claim that the infinite intelligence is attracting to them the buyer who really wants to have the property and who will love it and prosper in it. After having done this, I suggest that they quiet their mind, relax, let's go and get into a drowsy sleepy state which reduces all mental effort to a minimum then there are no there are two picture the check in their hands rejoice in the check give thanks for the check and go off to sleep feeling the naturalness of the whole mental movie created in their own mind they must act as though it were an object of reality and the subconscious mind will take it as an impression and through the deeper currents of the mind the buyer and the seller are brought together. A mental picture held in the mind backed by faith will come to pass. The Bowdoin Technique Charles Bowdoin was a professor at the Rossio Institute in France he was a brilliant psychotherapist and a research director of the new Nancy School of Healing, who in 1910 told that the best way to impress the subconscious mind was to enter into a drowsy sleepy state or a state aching to sleep in which all efforts were reduced to a minimum then in a quiet passive receptive way by reflection he would convey the idea to the subconscious. The following in his formula, a very simple way of securing this impregnation of the subconscious mind is to condense the idea which is to be the object of suggestion to sum it up in a brief phrase which can be readily graven on the memory and to repeat it over and over again as lullaby. Some years ago, a young lady in Los Angeles was angered in a prolonged bitter family lawsuit over a will. Her husband had bequeathed his entire state to her and his sons and daughters by a previous marriage were bitterly fighting to break the will. 
the bouldering technique was outlined to her and this is what she did she relaxed her body in an armchair entered in the sleepy state and suggested condensed the idea of her need into a phrase consisting of six words easily graven on the memory it is finished in divine order the significance to her of these words meant that infinite intelligence operating through the laws of her subconscious mind would bring about a harmonious adjustment through the principle of harmony. She continued this procedure every night for about 10 nights. After she got into a sleepy state, she would affirm slowly, quietly and feelingly the statement. It is finished in divine war order over and over again feeling a sense of inner pitch and an all pervading tranquility then she went off into her deep normal sleep on the morning of the 11th day following the use of the avo technique she awakened with the sense of well-being a conviction that it was finished her attorney called her the same day saying that the opposing attorney and his clients were willing to settle a harmonious agreement was reached and litigation was discontinued the sleeping technique by entering into a sleepy drowsy state effort is reduced to a minimum the conscious mind is submerged to a great extent when in a sleepy state the reason for this is that the highest degree of the outcropping of the subconscious occurs prior to sleep and just after we awaken. In this state, the negative thoughts which tend to neutralize your desire and so prevent acceptance by your subconscious mind are no longer present. Suppose you want to get rid of a destructive habit, assume a comfortable posture, relax your body and be still, get into a drowsy state and in that drowsy state say quietly over and over again as a lullaby, I am completely free from this habit, harmony and peace of mind reign supreme. Repeat the avo slowly, quietly and lovingly for 5 or 10 times night and morning. Each time you repeat the words, the emotional value becomes greater. When the urge comes to repeat the negative habit, repeat the avo formula out loud by yourself. By this means you induce the subconscious to accept their ideas and healing flaws. The thank you method. In the Bible, Paul recommends that we make known our request with praise and thanksgiving. Some extraordinary results follow this simple method of prayer. The thankful heart is always close to creative force of the universe causing countless blessings to flow toward it by the law of reciprocal relationship based on a cosmic law of action and reaction. For instance, a father promises his son a car for graduation. The boy has not yet received the car but is very thankful and happy and is as joyous as though he had actually received the car. He knows his father will fulfill his promise and he is full of gratitude and joy even though he has not yet received the car. Objectively speaking, he has however received it with joy and thankfulness in his mind. I shall illustrate how Mr. Brooke applied this technique with excellent results. He said, bills are piling up. I am out of work. I have three children and no money. 
What shall I do? Regularly, every night and morning, for a period of about three weeks, he repeated the words, Thank you, Father, for my world, in a relaxed, peaceful manner until the feeling or good of thankfulness dominated his mind. He imagined he was addressing the infinite power and intelligence within him, knowing, of course, that he could not see the creative intelligence or infinite mind. He was seen with the inner eye of spiritual perception, realizing that his thought image of wealth was the first cause relative to the money, position, and food he needed. His thought feeling was the substance of wealth and trammeled by antecedent conditions of any kind by repeating thank you further. Over and over again, his mind and heart were lifted up to the point of acceptance, and when fear, thoughts of lack, poverty, distress came into his mind, he would say, Thank you, Father, as often as necessary. He knew that as he kept up the thankful attitude, he would recondition his mind to the idea of wealth, which is what happened. The sequel to his prayer is very interesting. After praying in the above-mentioned manner, he met a former employer of his on the street whom he had not seen for 20 years. The man offered him a very lucrative position and advanced him $500 on temporary loss loan. Today Mr. Bro is vice president of the company for which he works. His recent remark to me was, I shall never forget the wonders of thank you father. It has worked wonders for me. The affirmative method, the effectiveness of an affirmation is determined largely by your understanding of the truth and the meaning back of the words is praying and praying is not vain reputation therefore the power of your affirmation lies in the intelligent application of definite and specific positives for example a boy adds three and three and puts down seven on the blackboard the teacher affirms with mathematical certainty that three and three are six Therefore, the boy changes his figures accordingly. The teacher statesman does not make 3 and 3 equal 6 because the latter was already a mathematical truth. The mathematical truth caused the boy to rearrange the figures on the blackboard. It is abnormal to be sick. It is normal to be healthy. Health is the truth of your being. When you Form health, harmony, and pitch for yourself or another. And when you realize these are universal principles of your own being, you will rearrange the negative patterns of your subconscious mind based on your faith and understanding of that what you affirm. The result of the affirmative process of prayer depends on your conforming to the principles in life, regardless of appearances, consider for a moment that there is a principle of mathematics and no error. There is a principle of truth but none of dishonesty. There is a principle of intelligence but none of in ignorance. There is a principle of harmony and none of discord. There's a principle of health, but none of disease, and there is a principle of abundance, but none of poverty. The affirmative method was chosen by the author for use on his sister, who was to be operated on for the 
removal of glass stones in a hospital in England the condition described was based on the diagnosis of hospital test and the usual x-ray procedures she asked me to pray for her we were separated geographically about 6500 miles but there is no time or space in the mind principle infinite mind or intelligence is present in its entirely at every point simultaneously i withdrew all thought from the contemplation of symptoms and from the corporeal personality altogether i affirmed of followers this prayer is for my sister Catherine she is relaxed and at peace poised balanced serene and calm the healing intelligence of her subconscious mind which created her body is now transforming every cell nerve tissue muscle and bone of her being according to the perfect pattern of all organs lost in her subconscious mind silently quietly all distorted thought patterns in her subconscious mind are removed and dissolved and the vitality wholeness and the beauty of the life principle are made manifest in every atom of her being she is now open and receptive to the healing currents which are flowing through her like a river restoring her to perfect health harmony and peace all distortions and ugly images are now washed away by the infinite ocean of love and peace flowing through her and it is so i from the air of several times a day and the end of two weeks my sister had an examination which showed a remarkable healing and the x-ray proved negative to affirm is to state that it is so and as you mentioned this attitude of mind is true regardless of all evidence to the contrary you will receive an answer to your prayer your thought can only affirm for even if it denies something you are actually affirming the presence of what you deny repeating an affirmation knowing what you were saying and what you were saying it leads the mind to that state of consciousness where it accepts that which you state as true keep on affirming the truths of life until you get the conscious reaction which satisfies the augmented will to method this method is just what the word implies it is turned from the procedures of dr finius percrust kimberly of maine dr kimberly a pioneer in mental and spiritual healing lived and practiced in belfast maine about 100 years ago a book called the kimbi manuscript published in 1921 by thomas y creel company in new york city and edited by horatio dresser is available in your library this book gives news for accounts of this man's remarkable result in prayer treatment of sick kimbi duplicated many of the healing miracles recorded in the bible in brief the argument method imagery to thought imagery consists of a spiritual reasoning where you convince the patient and yourself that his sickness is due to his false belief groundless fears and negative patterns lost in his subconscious mind you, re you reason it out clearly in your mind and convince your patient that the disease or ailment is due only to a distorted twisted pattern a thought which has taken form in his mind his body 
the strong belief in some external power and external causes has now externalized itself as sickness and can be changed by changing thought patterns. You explain to the sick person that the basis of all healing is a change of belief. You also point out that the subconscious mind created the body and all its organs, therefore, it knows how to heal it and can heal it and is doing now as we speak. You argue in the courtroom to your, of your mind that the disease in a shadow of the mind based on disease soaked more with thought, imagery. You continue to build up all the evidence you can muster on behalf of the healing power within which created all the organs in the first place and which has a perfect pattern of every cell, nerve and tissue within it. Then you render a verdict in the quarters of your mind in favor of yourself or your patient deliver the sickness one by faith and spiritual understanding. Your mental and spiritual evidence is overwhelming. There being but one mind, what you feel as true will be resurrected in the experience of the patient. This procedure is essentially the argumentative method used by Dr. Quimby for many from 1849 to 1869. The absolute method is like modern sound wave therapy. Many people throughout the world practice this form of prayer treatment with wonderful results. The person using the absolute method mentions the name of the patient such as John Jones then quietly and silently thinks of God and his qualities and attributes such as God is all bliss, boundless love, infinite intelligence, all-powerful, boundless wisdom, absolute harmony, indescribable beauty and perfection. As he quietly thinks alone, this lines he is lifted up in consciousness into a new spiritual wave plane, at which times he feels the infinite ocean of God's love is now dissolving everything unlike itself in the mind and body of John Jones for whom he is praying. He feels all the power and love of God and now focused on John Jones and what world is bothering or vexing Aim is now completely neutralized in the presence of the ocean, infinite ocean of life and love. The absolute method of prayer might be likened to the sound wave or sonic therapy recently shown by show me by a distinguished physician in Los Angeles. He has an ultrasound wave machine which oscillates at tremendous speed and send sound waves to any area of the body to which it is directed. These sound waves can be composed and told me of achieving remarkable results in dissolving arithmetic calcareous deposits as well as the healing and removal of other disturbing conditions. To the degree that we rise in consciousness by contemplating qualities and attributes of God, do we generate spiritual electronic waves of harmony, health and peace? Many remarkable healings follow this technique of prayer. A cripple wells wax. Dr. Phineas Procrast Quimby, of whom we spoke previously in this chapter, used the absolute method in the latter years of his healing career. He was really the father of psychosomatic medicine and the first psychoanalyst. He had capacity to diagnose clairvoyantly the cause of the patient's trouble, pains, and ashes. The following is a considered account of the healing of a cripple as recorded in Kimby Mathcraft. Kimby was called on to visit a woman 
full of blame, aged and bedridden. He states that her ailment was due to the fact that she was imprisoned by a creed so small and contracted that she could not stand up so upright and move about. She was living in the town of fear and ignorance. Furthermore, she was taking the Bible literally and it frightened her. In this town, can be said it was the presence and the power of God trying to burst the bands, break through the bonds and the rise from the dead. When she would ask others for an explanation of some passage of the Bible, the answer would be a stone. Then she would hunger for the bread of life. Dr. Kimby diagnosed her case as a mind cloudy and stagnated due to excitation and fear caused by the inability to see clearly the meaning of the passage of the Bible which she had been reading that showed itself in the body by her heavy and sluggish feeling which could which would terminate at as paralysis. At this point can be asked her what was meant in the Bible verses Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me, ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, Tesser, ye cannot come. John 7 33 to 34. She replied that it meant Jesus went to heaven. Can be explained what it is really meant by telling her that being with her a little while meant his explanation of her symptoms, feelings and their causes. He had compassion and sympathy for her memorand momentarily, but he could not remain. The next step was to go to him, the centers which are combi pointed out was the creative power of God in all of us. Quimby immediately troubled in his mind and contemplated the divine ideal, the vitality, intelligence, harmony and the power of God functioning in the sick person. This is why he said to the women, therefore, where I go you cannot come, for you, you are in a narrow, restricted belief and I am in hell. This prayer and explanation produced an uh, instantaneous sensation and a change came over her mind. She walked without her crutches. Quimby said it was one of the most singular of all his feelings. She was as it were dead to error and to bring her to life. Our truth was to raise her from the dead. When we quoted the resurrection of Christ and applied it to her own Christ or health. This produced a powerful effect on her. He also explained to her that the truth which she accepted was the angular idea which rolled away the stone of fear, ignorance and superstition, thereby releasing the healing power of God which made her whole. The decree method, power goes into our world according to the feeling and faith behind it. When we realize the power that moves, the world is moving on our behalf and is backing up our world. Our confidence and assurance grow. You do not try and add power to power. Therefore, there must be no mental striving coercion, force or mental wrestling. Our young girl used the decree method on a young man who was constantly phoning her, pressing her for dates and meeting her at the place of business. She found it very difficult to get rid of him. She decreed as follows, I release unto God. He is in his true place at all times. I am free and he is free. How now 
decree that my words go forth into infinite mind and it brings it to pass in the soul. She said he vanished and she has never seen him since, adding it was as though the ground shoaled him up. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. The light shall shine upon the ways job. 28 to 28 to serve yourself with scientific truth. When be a mental engineer and use tried and proven techniques in building a grander and greater life. Two, your desire is your prayer. Picture the fulfillment of your desire now and feel its reality and you will experience the joy of the answered prayer. Three, Desire to accomplish things the easy way with the sure aid of mental science you can build for you can build radiant health, success and happiness by thoughts you think in a hidden studio of your mind from experiment scientifically until you personally prove that there is always a direct response from the infinite intelligence of your subconscious mind to your conscious thinking. <clears throat> 6. Feel the joy and restfulness in foreseeing the source and accomplishment of your desire. Any mental picture which you have in your mind is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 7. A mental picture is all the thousand words your subconscious will bring to pass any picture held in the mind backed by faith. Number 8. Avoid with all effort or mental coercion in prayer. Get into a sleepy, drowsy state and lull yourself to a sleep valley and knowing that your prayer is answered. 9. Remember that the thankful heart is always close to the riches of the universe. 10. To affirm is to state that it is so and as a mountain this attitude of mind is true regardless of all evidence to the contrary you will receive an answer to your prayer 11 generate electric waves of harmony health and preach by thinking of the love and the glory of god what 12 what you degree and feel as true will come to pass decree harmony health peace and abundance